Good morning, friend. Welcome back. Today is a big day. It is potato planting day. My parents are on their way over today to help me plant potatoes. I just went to the nursery to go pick these up. And they're also going to help me plant all of the onions. It is a pretty exciting day. I think if we have time, I want to get to planting my cabbage and cauliflower as well. And I may have bought some other things at the <laughs> nursery than just seed potatoes. I couldn't help myself. I got a couple more cold weather crops. The reason I got a couple more cold weather crops is because what I had started here is not quite enough to fill out one raised bed. And I want one raised bed that is gonna be full of Calif uh, California <laughs> cauliflower and cabbage. So I picked up ones that I did not start. I got three different varieties. I got a cheddar cauliflower, so that's like an orange cauliflower, a purple cauliflower, and then a broccoli romanesco. And between what I started and these, that will be more than enough to fill one entire raised bed. I've got some work I need to do before my parents are gonna be here to prep the bed for the cold weather crops, the onions, and the potatoes. It was pouring down this morning. I think the rain has stopped. We are working whether it's rain, sun, or shine because this is the day that coordinated for me, Josh, because Josh is gonna help. He's not only gonna help plant, but he's gonna build a couple trellises and my mom and dad were available. And so come rain, sleet, or shine, Josh said it was snowing this morning. We are going to be, I was just looking out there, planting these things in the ground. And I wanted to show you a little update on the dahlias. It looks like they need a little watering, but I went ahead and topped them on, what day was that? That was Friday. And look how in just a couple days, today is Wednesday, they are already starting to grow these beautiful side shoots and they have perked up really nicely. I'm just super, super happy with how they look. Everything in here needs a drink of water, probably before I go out into the garden. Look at that. Beautiful. Another big project I need to get to, but I'm probably gonna to get to it tomorrow, and it's why we need to plant the onions out and the cold weather crops out today, is because I wanna get these started, but I'm completely out of trays. I am using all of them, so if I can get my onions planted out today and my cold weather crops out today, then I can reclaim four of my trays, which is gonna be probably more than enough to get those zinnias started and peanuts started. So I can see these snapdragons need some water. I have slowly been hardening off my snapdragons and my cauliflower and cabbage off by bringing these inside and outside for the last week. I also, in the next couple of weeks, can get these snapdragons planted, which will be awesome. Yesterday, I went out into the garden and spent some time just kind of standing out there and figuring out where I do want to put my cabbages and cauliflower and onions because I keep changing my mind. But I think I have a plan and I'm gonna head out there now as soon as I give these plants a little bit of water and I need to start prepping those garden beds for when my parents get here. You may have noticed that there's another shelf in here. Josh got me another shelf built because since I've up potted my dahlias, I really didn't have hardly any grow space in here. These are the cuttings that I started from the dahlias where I cut the tops of the dahlias and I put them in rooting hormone. And then I popped them in these trays and they're looking fantastic. I don't know if they've started growing roots yet or not. So 
I just realized that I don't need to bring these outside quite yet. So I'm gonna take these out here because I need to prepare the beds before we can actually plant into them. So what I'm gonna do is actually grab my soil amendments first, which is blood meal, because my soil is lacking in nitrogen. Onions are heavy nitrogen feeders, so I need to make sure that I amend that bed really well. This right here is just an all-purpose fertilizer that I'm going to put in the beds as well. And there's a little bag of that. I just talked to my parents on the phone and they are committed. We are going to get the potatoes in the ground. So my plan, I had to consult my garden plan for the umpteenth time. This bed right here is going to be my cold weather crops. So my cabbages and cauliflower. This bed right here is going to be my potatoes. That far bed in this row is gonna be onions and carrots. I did that last year where I interplanted carrots with onions and it worked beautifully. So I'm gonna do that this year. It saves so much space in the garden. This bed right here is gonna be onions and carrots as well. So I've got four beds I need to prep before my parents get here. So what I'm gonna do, well, let's see. Cabbage bed, I am going to just fertilize in the individual hole. I'm not gonna pull the landscape fabric up to then put it back down. I am not gonna use landscape fabric where I have my potatoes and where I have my onions and carrots. That worked beautifully last year. I'm gonna do that same thing again this year. It is kind of a bummer that the beds that I'm gonna be taking this landscape fabric off, the landscape fabric didn't move. I have three beds in this garden where the landscape fabric blew off over the winter because we get a lot of wind here and I didn't stake it down well enough and those beds, I'm gonna be putting the landscape fabric back on, but that's okay. That's just how the cookie crumbles. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get this irrigation off. Now I'm gonna remove this landscape fabric. And this is where the potatoes are going in. And in the fall, what I did to prepare these beds is I put a ton of fresh compost a ton of manure that was composted and soil amendments. And it smells beautiful. Now this landscape fabric I am absolutely going to reuse. So I need to fold it up nicely. I've got all the staples out, I believe. I'm sure I'm probably gonna find one or two in there. Okay, something to note is that I am seeing slugs in here, which makes sense. I could see why a slug would wanna live under this black fabric. This is what this is looking like. Slugs, I hate slugs. Look at that. I think that's, here's a root from whatever was in this bed last year. It smells so good, this smells so good. So this is absolutely disgusting because I hate slugs, but I'm gonna go through and literally pick out all the slugs I see and toss them over the garden fence. And they're actually really easy to see because I disrupted their home and they're moving. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna go chuck these. 
Slugs are why I never have mulched around my plants because the first year I gardened, I mulched and everything was devoured by slugs because slugs love to live in mulch. And that is our biggest pest in the Pacific Northwest, at least for me in my garden. That was the all-purpose organic fertilizer. Now I have the blood meal, which this is basically just nitrogen. And this is what my soil is very much lacking. That is one bed down. I have four more to go, three more to go. This is the next bed that I'm gonna do. And I have some green onions that I planted last fall. I'm gonna harvest those and we will eat those this week. The back of this bed is where I have already planted peas, but those have not come up yet. This landscape fabric has holes for planting beans. So I'm gonna pull this up and use this again this coming year. I'm gonna prepare this bed the exact same way I did the last bed. So first things first, take out the staples. I had just put an extra piece of fabric over this to reduce the amount of holes exposure where weeds could come up with all the fabric I had left. First harvest, technically, of 2024's garden. I got this bed almost completely prepped. I've got the two fertilizers on it, but one thing I did not do to this bed because it had that landscape fabric on it and I had planted those green onions, I never topped it with compost and manure. So this bed, I think this bed and this bed are the only two beds that still need compost and manure. This bed I had planted out in the fall and I had never covered it with landscape fabric. And you can really see the difference, how many weeds are popping up. And now one thing I'm noticing actually right here, this is lettuce that must have self seeded itself because I planted lettuce in the fall and I just let it grow. But this is gonna be the second time I have weeded this bed. And this bed last year was a potato bed that never had landscape fabric on it when it was growing. Because how potatoes grow, I figured landscape fabric would not be the best option for that. And so my goal is to always be rotating, right? So that bed was black beans last year and it's gonna be onions and carrots, which I think the onions are gonna really like because beans are nitrogen fixers. And this year, this bed is going to be pumpkins, squash. Josh is building me a trellis right here. So I wanna put some birdhouse gourds here and zinnias. And so I need to get this weeded put the compost on this bed and that bed, manure on this bed and that bed, because those are the only two I didn't do. And I'm really glad that I composted and manured the rest of them because it's gonna be a lot of work to do just these two beds. I'm so grateful I do not have to do 20 of them. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna weed, put the compost and manure down, put the soil amendments down, and then I'm gonna lay the landscape fabric that I just pulled off that other bed. I'm gonna lay it on this bed. 
so that this bed will then be prepped and ready to go when I'm ready to put pumpkins and squash in it. Here's the before. I'm gonna go grab a weeding tool. And while I'm going up to grab a weeding tool, I might as well take the wheelbarrow and grab some more compost. I just, boom! I just brought down manure and my weeding tool. I'm gonna get this weeded. These are dead cauliflower plants. And I'm just gonna chuck those over the fence. I see volunteer cilantro in here too, which I had cilantro in this bed as well. So I think today or tomorrow, if I say today, I know that's probably biting off more than I can chew. So tomorrow, or this weekend, <laughs> I'm gonna be planting some cilantro. Here's the after. I pulled up the irrigation. Now I'm gonna get two bags of manure on there and two bags of compost on here before I put the soil amendments on it. I just take these weeds, chuck them over the fence. Well, maybe I'm gonna put three layers of manure. Then I'll go grab three more bags of this. I'll put manure and compost on that bed up there. I got this bed all prepped. Two kinds of soil amendments, manure, compost. Now I'm going to cover it because I am going to use this fabric this summer when I grow my pumpkins and squash and zinnias in this bed. So Josh is here. So I'm going to tuck this in really good and then I'm going to put the staples in and then officially this bed is done. I need to get two more bags of compost on that bed up there and then that bed we can actually start planting in today. Josh is gonna be building me a trellis right here today. So I'm gonna to fold the landscape fabric under a little bit so that he has space to put the T-posts in and actually build the trellis. Here is the after. I need to wash off the dirt from the edge. We're not even working in this bed other than Josh is gonna build me a trellis today, but it feels good to finally get that done. Josh is running up to go grab me some compost for this bed, and then this bed is done, which we're gonna be planting in this bed today. I did get the soil amendments in there, so that one is ready to go. My parents just pulled into the driveway, so I need to go run and grab, what do I need to run and grab? Potatoes, because they're planting potatoes and onions. So I need to grab a new pair of gloves too, because it's been raining this whole time, and my gloves are soaked, and Dirty, and so I'm probably gonna go through three or four pairs of gloves today, which is normal for me. And it's even worse when it's raining. Josh also brought out the propane so that we can burn holes into the landscape fabric where we're gonna be planting cabbage up there. Okay, let's go grab potatoes and onions. One reason I love garden season is it's the best kind of workout. Oh, I'd rather do this than go to the gym any day. The game plan, potatoes, uh -huh. onions, cauliflower and cabbage if we can. If we don't okay. get to that, okay. that's okay, but I've got the potato bed amended and ready to go. I have one of the two onion beds amended okay. and ready to go. Will you just direct traffic? Dad's got a really cool thing. <laughs> so my, Did you hear about it yet? I heard about it, but they have not heard oh, about it yet. So I wanted, experiment. I wanted my dad to share with you his tool that he wants to try planting the potatoes with. 
Can so yeah. Yes. <laughs> so if you want to go get ready, I will. I'm going to bring all this down I'm to the. Put raggy clothes on. Yes. And warm. Warm. Oh, um, would you ask, or would you, Mom, be willing to preheat the oven to 350? Yeah. Because yeah. we're going to have lasagna. Ooh, yummy. For dinner tonight and broccoli. I'll let whatever one she. She'll probably do the oven one because that's the one she knows. Okay. So these are shallots and Walla Wallas. Oh, do you want to bring these down for me? Oh, that's true. I can bring them down. I can carry the cabbages and cauliflower by hand, I think. Yes, I probably didn't need the whole wheelbarrow for this. <laughs> Thank you. Dad, did you buy that special for this? Look what I found. It was a, it's really a clam digger, but I'm going to try it for potatoes. So I have no idea if this is going to work. And so here we go. You, you put it down and then you hold your finger on this little hole here and it's supposed, hey, not bad. Not bad. And all you have to do. Nice. And that's it. Instead of dig the whole thing up, we'll get a little deeper than that. And we will have ourselves. Oh, look at that. You got to see the hole. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. Nice. Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> so my dad was a little disappointed that I'm only doing one bed of potatoes this year instead of two, but we just couldn't quite go through that many potatoes. But I am going to be doing sweet potatoes. Okay, good. So we'll be able to dig up sweet and potatoes. I'll leave, I'll leave the clam digger here so we've got that for next time. So. Perfect. Dad, I don't know if I bought enough potatoes, so what we could maybe do is lay out the potatoes first and then just see how many potatoes we have. Yep. Because if we have a little extra space, I might put like onions or something at the end. Yep, sure. So we're going to do three deep and then 16 across if I bought enough potatoes. Gosh, I sure hope I bought enough potatoes. So what we'll do, is that about the depth you want there? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so we're going to do... Let's just get the, let's get the first three down. I gotta see if this works again. This is so cool. Okay, here we go. Finger over the hole. Oh, <laughs> oh this is a back saver. There we go. There we go. Last time I dug the whole bed up a <laughs> foot deep, and it was. Uh, crazy about a work. This is like so much easier. Okay. These are the Yukon Golds. And then maybe we should do, oh yeah, I think we have enough. Oh yeah. Okay. We got this all laid out. So at the end we have our Yukon Golds, we have our Russets, and these are our Cal Whites. Perfect amount of potatoes I bought today because my mom is able to take Except home. Except I get the leftovers. Yeah. Yes. So she's going to take the extras. That's why I was saying it was perfect because oh, you, yes. I bought enough for you. Yes, thank you. And you'll be, able to take a, you'll be able to take a bunch of onions home as well. Perfect. So I am going to go run and meet someone who's here to talk about a possible greenhouse. And they are just going to start planting potatoes. Yes. And this is not a sun hat, by the way. It's a rain hat. Yeah, it's raining. I don't raining. know if you've seen the sky. Oh. It's kind of gnarly. <laughs> it's been raining all morning. Yes, very encouraged that they were willing to come out in the rain. I thought that I would have plenty of time to run back over to my parents after meeting with the greenhouse rep to help them plant these potatoes, but they get this entire bed planted in less than 15 minutes with this clam digger, and I am just blown away by how well this clam digger worked. Now, the thing with the clam digger is that they are designed to work in wet sand. And obviously this soil is extremely saturated in water because it's been raining for the last two weeks or week and a half or so. So this soil is very wet. So we're not sure, because we were talking about this later, that if this clam digger was used in completely dry soil, say it hadn't rained in two or three weeks, would this have even worked? We're not sure. <laughs> we might try it. I might pull it out later this year because my dad did gift me this clam digger so that next year we can use this. And so maybe sometime this season when it's not, when it's in the middle of summer and the soil's a little bit drier, I might try it to see if it worked. But in this instance, it worked beautifully. 
Now, I've never been clamming. <laughs> Just a funny thing. I've always wanted to go clamming. It's kind of funny because we live in the Pacific, North Low, Pacific Northwest and we have really good clamming around here, but we've never, we've never done it. I've gone crabbing a lot of times. I know that's not the same thing, but I have never been clamming. So maybe now that I'm the official proud owner of a clam digger, we're gonna have to put that on our list of things to do. So here I have three different varieties of potatoes. The ones my parents are planting right now, those are Yukon Golds. The ones in the middle are Russets, and the ones at the end are California Whites. I have grown Yukon Golds and Russet Potatoes and had great success. Russet Potatoes actually have always, not always, I've only grown them once, and that was last year, and they were so prolific and abundant that I knew that I needed to grow them again this year just because they produced so well. Per potato I planted, it was exponential, the potato harvest I got from it. And then I like Yukon Gold potatoes, so I wanted to grow those, and I've never grown Cal Whites, and when I was at my local nursery getting these potatoes on this morning, I thought I would give them a try. Now you will notice that I don't have any purple potatoes. I grew purple potatoes the first couple years I gardened, and I enjoyed growing them. They were really fun to harvest, but when it come, came to eating them, they tasted great, but I didn't find myself necessarily wanting to cook with them. They're beautiful, they taste good, but we just prefer white potatoes. So I know that if I'm gonna grow potatoes for us to eat, I want to try to grow ones we enjoy eating. And so I don't grow purple potatoes. As fun as they are to grow, I don't grow them because we don't enjoy eating them as much as white potatoes. Now my dad was disappointed that I only planted one bed of potatoes because he loves harvesting potatoes. And so do I, it's probably Josh and I's, or not Josh and I's, my dad and I's favorite thing to harvest, that and carrots. I love harvesting carrots too. Any root crop is fun to harvest because you just never know what you're gonna get. And he was disappointed because I'm only doing one bed, but hopefully as long as the sweet potatoes that I intend to grow do well, we'll be able to harvest those and that will be fun. And that'll be something new. Look, my mom found a carrot. So my mom and dad actually found about five carrots that overwintered in this bed that we ended up eating with dinner on this night. So harvesting these sweet potatoes will be fun because sweet potatoes is something that I have never harvested before. I technically grew them one year and I grew them in straw bales and they did absolutely terrible. And so I wouldn't even consider it a harvest because it was basically roots I was harvesting, not actual potatoes. So I think it'll be fun for my dad and I to get to harvest a root crop that is a brand new crop to us. I think that we will have just as much fun harvesting sweet potatoes if they do well as potatoes. And look at this worm my mom found, super healthy looking earthworm. So she put it right back in the bed and we're gonna let that worm just hang out in the bed. So in less than, well maybe, it was probably 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, my parents were able to get that entire potato bed planted, which was incredibly quickly because they had the help of the potato digger or clam digger. I'm calling it a potato digger now because that's what we used it for. And so now we're gonna turn our attention to this year's onion crop. So we're back at the first bed that I prepped earlier and I did not get the compost down. So you can see there's two piles of very dark soil that is compost that Josh brought down for me and opened up and put into these beds. So my dad is going to smooth that out and my mom is gonna start separating these onions. So I have three varieties of onions here. I have Red Wing, Patterson, both of those varieties are a storage onion, Walla Walla, Leeks, and Shallots. So my mom's gonna start by separating the Red Wing onions and look at the roots of these onions. They look incredibly healthy and beautiful. So what she's gonna do is just gently work the soil so that she can gently pull out each little onion plant. And I grew these onions in four inch pots. This is the first time I have grown onions like this. And it so far seems like it's worked really, really well. Time will tell though with how the harvest goes. 
So we're gonna use my seating square. I could link this down below for you if you're interested in it. And we are going to plant these onions according to the square foot gardening planting spacing. So I did have to Google it because I don't have any of that stuff memorized. And according to the square foot gardening method, you can put nine onions per square foot. So on that little seating square, they're color coded and the nine mark for nine plants per square foot is a yellow. So you take the orange little Doppler thing and you indent the soil with your one foot and then you mark where the holes are marked yellow for nine spots and then you plant nine onions in it. So my parents have started planting the onions over here in this bed and the rain has stopped which is fantastic. Wonderful. It is wonderful. windy. My mom is gonna take two of the red, no, you're taking, what onions are you taking? I'm on? taking two Walla Wallas and a white. Perfect. So my mom is breaking up. We're gonna have kind of an assembly line here. Let me tell you, I just had a couple of grandbaby girls for a few days while their brother was being born and they had very long hair. And this reminds me of, of trying to get their hair untangled, <laughs> uncontrolled. <laughs> it was a very similar experience. Very That's gently, right, yeah, that looks perfect. very right. gently separating it. How many beds of onions are you doing? For sure two full beds. And then I'm gonna plant carrot seeds in between. That's what I did last year and that worked really well. My mom is going to work on that's Deta one box. Perfect. Detangling the onions. And I'm going to go prep the other bed so that when we're done with this bed, we can get going on the other bed. I end up going and prepping a bed that already has something in it. So the garlic bed, I did not finish planting out one entire bed worth of just garlic. So the last like four feet or three feet don't have anything in it. And so I go and I start to prep that because I'm thinking that my shallots and some leeks would go really well in the garlic bed. So that's what I'm doing while my mom detangles these onions. This is where I want to put the shallots next to the garlic. So I just pull, oop, I just pulled back the landscape fabric. This I already put compost down and manure. So we just Googled how close we can put the shallots together and we can put them 16 per square foot. So I think we're going to be able to put some other type of maybe leeks in here as well. Because I have leeks too, mom. All right. So just see how I'll far we get. I'm gonna come help my dad. I'm gonna do the onions on the back side, and my dad's gonna do the onions on this side so we can just start working our way this way. It's a family affair today. Josh right there is building me a trellis. My dad is now separating onions, and my mom is planting shallots, and I, and planting onions. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. So I wanna make sure that I keep, and I don't lose that, because I definitely have done that when planting onions. Because at this point, we're just eyeballing it since my mom has the seating square. And then I did just go put the lasagna in the oven. Because when we're done with this, we're all going to be hungry. I mean, I'll lock it into place, but yeah, it got the right direction, too. My mom just called me over. She has some exciting news. There was exactly 37 leaks in the two cartons. Okay. And I did the the poking stick 
all the way to the bottom. So they are well down there. Awesome. But I will pull them up just one thing okay. at a time. When you're so anyway, 37. That's 36, and this one's curvy. <laughs> so I, I was holding this one out because I don't think it would grow. Because look at how it is. Oh, yeah. It's curvy. So I'll pull them up a little bit okay. higher and then tap them in a bit. So we still have six square feet oh, that we can... Oh, these are shallots, not leeks. Yeah, those are shallots. Yes, two cartons of shallots. So then we can put... Seven. How about we put leeks in this next okay. row, which I think leeks... Well, I don't know. I'm going to have to Google that. I don't know how far... So all I'm Googling to find the spacing is square foot gardening leeks. So we can put nine per square foot with the leeks. Okay, so that's the uh, same one as the Walla Wallas, yes. or the red onions that he was doing. Correct. I'm still planting the red onions. I'm over halfway, maybe I'm about halfway done with that bed. My mom is starting the leeks, and then my dad, he just went inside to warm up, but he's back out ready to go again. And he's gonna get this bed ready. This bed I did not get ready before they got here. This bed, I already put the compost and manure down this fall, so I don't need to do that. So the only thing that needs to happen is the landscape fabric needs to come up. And then we're going to put some of the soil amendment, so the fertilizer, just not compost or manure. And then we're gonna get Walla Wallas planted in this bed. This is a sage plant that I do want to transplant. So my dad has here, the fertilizer and the fish. So that's the same stuff, Dad, you put in the bed before we put the landscape fabric on. Sure. And that's the nitrogen. And my soil is very nitrogen deficient. I soil tested it. So a good five to six scoops of that. Yep. And then we're gonna get the Walla Wallas in here, which I know that this is gonna be not enough to fill this whole bed. So we'll probably put some other variety of onion in this bed as well. Just not sure which ones yet. The rain is back in all fours, and so we're trying to wrap this up very, very quickly. Josh got my second trellis done. So thank you, Josh, for getting that done. He said, you're welcome. You probably can't hear him. My mom was able to get the shallots here, these are gonna be easy to tell which are which on this first area. And then leeks are down here. And then over here, so this is the second or the first trellis Josh put up today. I got this bed finished. So the first half closest to me here are the Walla Wallas. And then it's gonna be easy to tell what is the other variety, which are the red ones. So red onions, white onions. I have here a snapdragon that was in with my onion. So I put a snapdragon there. And then in this corner, I put a snapdragon there. I'm gonna start cleaning up all of this. These are some extra ones that I'm gonna go have, see if my mother-in-law wants them. Here's some leeks here. I've been able to reclaim some of my trays here, which is great because I need more trays. Get this in the wheelbarrow. I need to get all this landscape fabric up too. My parents here are almost done with this bed. I've transitioned from a sun hat to a rain hat with a hoodie inside, <laughs> but my head is warm. Yes, good. <laughs> good. So I think there's going to be a little bit of extra room at the back end of this bed. So what I'll do is I'll end up putting leaks back there if there is extra room. And I'm going to help them. I'm just cleaning up a little bit and then I'm going to help them get those in the ground so we can get inside. Got it. Got it. Woohoo. Perfect. Because now it's even pouring down more. So we got potatoes planted, onions planted. Huge progress was made. Dinner should be basically ready. So we're going to go inside, warm up, and get some dinner. Oh. Josh is going to come rescue me and grab the wheelbarrow so I can show you everything we got done. This bed is Patterson onions in the back. I'm going to go ahead and plant leeks, but that'll be on a different day because it's absolutely torrential downpour right now. This is 
crazy. <laughs> Josh said this is unnecessary because it's so wet out here. Thank you. Let's see if we have anything sprouting. No sprouts yet. Those are calendulas from last year. So this bed is planted. I'll put the irrigation back tomorrow, but this is all potatoes, Californias, russets, Yukon Golds. I got that last corner bed prepped and ready to go. We've got one out of two trellises Josh built today. And we've got these onions here. Needless to say, we did not plant <laughs> the cabbages. I don't know if it's supposed to rain tomorrow. If it's not gonna be raining, then I'm gonna come back out and plant the cabbages tomorrow. We could not have ended that at any better of a time. If we didn't end when we did, we would have had to end because it is now a torrential downpour. Like, whew. So that was perfect timing on that. So much stuff was accomplished. Oh my goodness, look at that. I am leaving. I am the problem. I am, what is that song? It's me, I, I'm the problem, it's me. I'm the problem. My, my coat is so dirty. It needs to, I don't know how to wash this. I'm gonna have to read how to wash this. We are all cold. We are all drenched. My parents just hopped in the shower to warm up and they brought a change of clothes so they're gonna be clean. Josh and I need to get cleaned up. Dinner is almost done. I think I'm gonna put a piece of foil on that so it can continue to cook. And what a productive day. We didn't get the cabbage planted, clearly, or the cauliflower, no big deal. I have three trays now that I can plant my zinnias and I can get my peanuts planted and I can actually start more seeds because I have more trays. It was kind of like this domino thing. I needed to get things planted so that I could get more trays. Anyway, <laughs> it worked out just perfect. Thank you, mom and dad, for coming and helping. I really appreciate that. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. If you are wondering when you can plant things, I will leave a link down below where you can put your zip code in and it'll it will tell you when it is good to start planting things. If you enjoyed this, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Because we put things in the ground, means hopefully we will be able to be harvesting very, very soon. Actually, it'll probably be three or four, five months before we're harvesting, but, oh, I need to go outside and grab those green onions. I left them out there. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.